time, Friday night, when a group of old broads get together to talk about their week in business. Hope you had a good one too. Well, hello everyone to another tippy time. Cheers to the end of the week. We all deserve it. Uh, today I have Gail again. Hello, Gail. Hey. And we have a special guest, Katie Hurst. And I'm going to let Katie introduce herself for a minute because I don't have her bio in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I stopped so listening Katie. at special. I didn't know if that was in the good sense or the special, special sense. So. <laughs> no, special guest. Well, no, no, not that special. <laughs> I will remind everyone that this is tippy time, so it is a little bit wild and woolly. <laughs> so, Katie, yep. why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Me? Righto. <clears throat> I'm accountant, bookkeeper, jack of all trades, master of none, currently running a virtual reception business um, alongside the accounting business and bookkeeping business. Yeah, I just love business. And Gail is one of the amazing ladies I get to work with. So very lucky indeed. And Charlie, I just recently met, so this is good. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to working with you too. So um, you say you work at run a virtual reception business mm. but it's a little bit more than that isn't it it's what, what you do from what I understand yeah yeah so it has morphed into more so when I originally bought the business in November 2020 it was literally just virtual reception and I think for the majority of our clients we're just taking messages but then I think as the business has gone on and certainly in the middle of COVID everything changed you know like if people were working from home they weren't getting back to the office so people's needs just changed so it naturally morphed um and I think those clients that we get to work more one-on-one -on -one with I mean you think virtual reception you think that we don't have any relationship with the clients but we really do you know you're answering their calls all the time you're getting to know their clients um and then you're reporting that information back to the clients so we basically do beginning to end it's like we're sitting in your office we're the manager we're the boss you know, boss babes. That's us, really. <laughs> this is this is the face behind the boss babes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but you just made a really, really uh, interesting point there, and I know, I know Gail's um, brought it up a couple of times. Some sometimes people get through to, uh, you know, like Gail for me, or someone, or someone else will ring in, and oh, so you're just the call centre. Well, no, we're not no. just the call centre. We're actually part of the team. Um, and we're an integral part of the team because we're the person that gets that stuff through and handled with our clients. Yeah, and honestly, Gala has the best comeback for that one. Like it's, yeah, what was your, what was the one that you said once, Gala, was superb? I'm not a um, call centre thingy. I am a director of my own company and yep. I excel in customer service. Yeah. <laughs> I love Isn't it. Isn't that gold? That is gold. I and love she thought it. of that on her feet. I would have had to have that like written there to remind me, you know, like. Yeah, no, it, I would it have was... been too taken back. <laughs> yeah, no. But people do say that. And I'm like, no. It's like, no. But then you, like I was talking to one client one day, I said, oh, I'm just a receptionist. And the person actually interrupted me. And they said, no, you are not just a receptionist. And I was like, oh, okay. So it does remind you, you get some clients that like it and some clients that see it as just, oh, you're picking up the phone. But it is a lot more than that. It really is. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And um, I, th I think it's something really important. To... Sorry. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so I was training our admin people and it was like, you're the face of the business. You are the mm. first contact lots of people <clears throat> have with our business. It is really important that you know about the business, about what we're doing, who who does what, how to pass these calls through mm. and the things you can and can't say. <laughs> it yeah. makes such a difference I honestly I think it's more than that though like um mm. in the system the particular system that we use we have the ability to call up a, a number immediately you know within seconds <clears throat> and that with the with the information that's stored there it gives us the name so the minute you say to the person their name call them by their name the whole conversation pivots Honestly, the whole conversation pivots. It's like, oh, oh, you know me. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. I remember last time you spoke to such and such, you know, did you get hold of them? Did you sort it out? It just changes the feel of the whole conversation because I think 99% of people just want to be heard. That's it, you know, and they just want to be heard or have an or be acknowledged about the fact that they're, they're calling in, they have an issue, whatever it may be. And that they can get the service that they need. So, yeah, it is very much about that. It is very much about the fact that it's beyond customer service. It's about customer relations. 
Um, Absolutely. And yeah. I was also just thinking, as you were saying that, um, and I'd be interested in Gail and your, your view on it, is that if people have got to the point of picking up the phone to make a phone call, particularly these days, it's because they really need to speak to someone. It's not yeah. because this is they, they have to do this. It's because the email's not working or text isn't working or whatever it is they have requires that interpersonal um, interaction <clears throat> to get the information through or to get the information that they need to do what they need to do. I think you have to think about too, like, I mean, I know for one of the people I, or two people that I work for, I run interference. So like people ring up wanting something and and she's down on the factory floor running her ass off getting her stuff ready she hasn't got time for me to put all the calls through so you find out what they want ring her once a day get 500 answers and then ring them all back oh that's, that's yeah a, that's, that's a lot of work and that's a very good part of the job that's a great but, part of the work and that is one reason why you and i get into the relationship the arrangement we have the relationship we have in terms of my phone diverts and if I'm doing something if I'm involved in writing code or yeah. troubleshooting or I've got meetings on I know that my phone's going to divert to someone who will pick up the phone answer it and has got a brain enough to say let me have a look at that because I think I might be able to answer that myself for you and then it's done <coughs> that what you just said there Charlie that that is a major point of difference I think in the business that Gal has and the business that I have is that this industry of virtual reception has been going, so virtual reception in itself as its own type of business has been going for 15 years, um, you know, internationally and in Australia. And I think initially when it started here, it literally was a message taking service, but it has the ability to evolve, right? It has that ability to evolve and be the, the core center of the business because how many people that are in business know that they don't have enough time in the day? They just don't. You don't have enough time in the day. And having someone answer the phone or get back to callers and then do what needs to be done, take over what needs to be done is a massive relief for the business owner. Like I know when you phone me, like so Gail referred me to you and then I wasn't getting anywhere and I still haven't gotten anywhere because my day revolves around other clients. The fact that you picked up the phone and contacted me to alleviate, immediately alleviate everything that needed to be done is what a person in our position does, whether we're working remotely or working within the business. Mm -hmm. It's what you do. You get in there, roll up your sleeves and just do the job because it's a part of the mechanism of that business. And I think that's that's a really important thing. We don't see ourselves as sitting outside of the business. We see ourselves often as sitting in the business mm -hmm. because our job is to help run the business in the best way that we can or to the degree that the client wants us to. So we're definitely not outside of the business. That's for sure. How do you think about that, Gail? I think that's true. I think you're part of the team. I think that sometimes virtually, um, and I very much dislike the work as, as being people saying we're being outsourced. It's actually not mm. about being outsourced. It's about um, people don't need a full time, an office and a full time receptionist. No, they don't. I think, I think those days are gone. And most yep. of the people that I work for are <clears throat> 10 hours a week and under. Um, but to, where, if you're going to employ someone for 10 hours a week, you have to have somewhere to put them and that would be an office and then you have to rent. And, and so to, outsourcing is a really bad, I, I just don't like the word, but I think that we play an integral role <clears throat> in small business because we can give them pretty much a full-time service for as little as five hours a week because that's yep. all they need. Yes. Yeah. I actually used to say um, in my corporate, when I was, when I was doing corporate work, uh, working for the man, if you like, um, that I was an advocate for the client into my company. Um, mm. So as much as I was there to represent the company to the customer, <clears throat> A major part of my role ended up being representing the client back into my company because I was the one who would go out, talk to them, talk about where their pain points were, talk about what their projects were, what they wanted to do, where they wanted to go, take that all back in, go back into my company, find the people I needed to, and then get them in touch with the client so that we could move all that forward. Um, and that's just something I've taken with running my own business now um, with 
a team of virtual assistants and other people. Mm. Uh, and, and it goes down really well because they don't need me full time. They need me, as you said, five to ten hours a week often, mm. sometimes even less. Sometimes it's like we have a big peak and I'll be doing more and then it all dies off and we're back to running at normal rates. Mm. It works really well. It works well too because there's a level of flexibility in it. So under the Australian tax laws or under the, you know, as Gail will know, under the employment laws, you can have a person under casual employment, but after a certain period of time of prolonged casual employment of relatively regular hours, the law stipulates that you are required to offer that person permanent part-time work that's a massive cost to a business like it's a really big cost to a business it can be up to 25 percent in in on cost payroll on cost that's at the top end if you've got a person that's accruing sick leave annual leave and all of those entitlements but to have that commitment in the office for just one person that may come to you specializing in one area so if you've got a receptionist and they tend to just specialize in reception or administration in terms of organizing you're not able to so you, you can't easily change their role or they can't diversify as much so a lot of the VAs <clears throat> that are in the Australian marketplace and I agree with Gail it's got nothing to do with outsourcing it's got to do with being smart in business mm -hmm. right why carry a, a payroll overhead uh, because you don't want to outsource I mean it just doesn't make any bloody sense if you go and get someone to do your marketing and your advertising uh, hello, that's probably the equivalent of outsourcing if you want to coin the phrase that way, you know, yeah. you're looking at someone else to do the work for you. The difference is that a lot of these roles are very diverse, you know, like I know in, in my business, I work across 60 different systems, at least there's a lot of complexity to it. Mm -hmm. And Garland herself will be qualified in the, you know, four job scheduling app so we learn very much on the run. So we're not just sitting there doing one thing, we're doing a multitude of things whether that be working excel or word or answering the phone or you know and it was quite interesting so just we, mate, next minute trade a yeah, exactly like you know, we are not just beauty and brains we are your shop <laughs> you know, like we are the whole package like and i think that's really really underrated like Gal and I hot desk this week, and it was it was a lot of fun actually. It was good for us. It got I've us not had a test our I've not had a chance to talk to Charlie oh, and tell her yeah, how yeah, lovely we, it was. Yeah, we went in hot desk and um, at a gorgeous place that Gal found on the beach, Charlie. Yeah, like on the beach. Very nice. It was very very the nice. Beach. Like I can, oh. we walked out, and we could smell the sea. It was really it was lovely. Like, oh, oh the, the sea breeze was divine, but it was such a good set up and the comment to us at the end of the day not us to anyone was surprised at the diversity of what we were doing so I think in that day we had yeah. calls in from trades people legal um, you know a whole heap of different things you know tracking products I think Gail was tracking products through the warehouse and you know for Australia Post deliveries and you know and then we we're talking financial literacy and the programs that we want to do and then we we're talking about the business plans I've got to still do for clients and so it's not just like a single thing that we do it's it's so many things and the fun bit is that we're actually helping the client helping the client yeah. so yeah I think Australia has to get rid of that whole stigma around outsourcing because they tend to and I might be generalizing but I think they tend to think of outsourcing as sending the work overseas I think that's been the historic definition of it yeah I, yeah. I think you're entirely correct I like to call it strategic sourcing so you know, you're that's really nice I like that in your planning um you're deciding what parts of the business or the parts of the work can be parceled out mm. um and how that can be parceled out that that does require a lot of work on behalf of the business owner uh, and the business management <clears throat> to, to, to understand what that, those parcels of work are and then how that interacts, what the touch points are with their business. Mm, it and, does. And what, what is required of them. And sometimes they do need to change the way they work. Now, I think it's like that they change the way they work better, but it is change. And as we know, people don't like change a lot of the time. No. Um, and sometimes they're just too busy too to handle that um and and again that's where we come in to help out because we're the type of people that can step in and say okay so give us something just one thing okay we've got a process for that now now what's the next thing okay there's your process for that what's the next thing there's your process for that 
we get the processes written, we work out the systems. Oh, we don't have a system for this. We don't have a tool that will allow us to do this. So what have you got at the moment? You've got this, we need to interface into that. What have we got in our kit bag of tools that we can use? How does that interact? What do we need to do to make that all work for you? Um, so it's, it's very, very strategic in what we do. It's not you know, just like yeah. all honest and yeah, it'll, it'll be right, mate. No, we, we really want to do a good job and we will make sure we do a good job as a result. Uh, yeah, it's I actually really, I, you know, I like that phrase. I'm still in that one for me, Charlie, because I think that's really, it is strategic. And I know when I started, look, and I think I've actually blogged about this or written about this a number of years ago. I personally think there's like this phenomenon. You get into business, you're relatively cash flow strapped. You haven't got capital to back you. Um, for whatever reason, you get into business, right? <clears throat> And often in the early years of business, you're doing bloody everything. You are doing everything, right? So you perhaps then develop the mindset or the belief that you are the best person for doing that, right? But it's not until you have someone step into your space and into your world and you realise how much more efficient they might be at something that they specialise in or something that they do that you sort of feel a sense of relief because you can perhaps let it go. Not every business owner is going to let it go that easily or quickly. And that's okay too because at the end of the day, it's their business, it's their money that's on the line, and they're the person that's got to transition. But if any Australian business wants to transition to a space of being financially free or financially freer, financially secure, the smartest thing they can do is offload the tasks that drain their time and drain their energy and give it to someone that will do it in half the time, far more professionally, for a fraction of the price because if you can go out and pay if your hourly rate's 200 bucks but then you're paying someone 40 dollars an hour you're 160 ahead so it just makes sense right yeah. but it's and and the other thing is like gal's got a massive network like for when gal went out to look for the place for us to so say she put it out to her network so our industry because we all talk to each other because we're online all the time because we know that we're working remotely we will network we will find the professionals that yeah. business owners need and yeah. and that's just simply by tapping into our networks that's so much that's just that's gold right there you know like yeah, I didn't have absolutely. to do a single thing Gail found it so and Gail yeah. found me you so it worked really well yeah yeah and um, I know, you know, Gail will come to me and I'm like, oh, you know, there's this tool or there's this thing here that we could do or uh, we actually need to define that a little bit more because there's so many variations and there's so much nuance in what you're asking me there that I actually need that more information to get it. But no one knows that they've got to ask for that. No one knows that they've got to give it. You've actually got to sit down and have a conversation to pull that all out so that you yeah. can write, write it up for you and find the most appropriate tool. Um, I actually just wanted to touch a little bit on, you said, you know, you could give it to someone who does it um, in half the time you do um, and all of that. Some people sort of get that view of, but I know how to do this. I've learned how to do this. How can you do it quicker than me? It's a matter of, um, you know, I get this all the time and it's like, I, I could learn how to fix this problem with my website. Yeah, you could. Absolutely. And you'll learn how to do it. I'm quite happy to teach you how to do it but then you're not going to need to do that for another 6 to 12 months. And yeah. when you come back to that in 6 to 12 months, you not only have to work out what it was you did before, you then have to work out what has changed in the meantime and bring yourself up to speed on that. I do this every day. Single day. Yeah, that's a really every good point. Every day. Um, that's and a that's really good point. that's why we can do it quicker. It's not that you know we're smarter or we're better. It's just that. This is what this is the muscles that we are exercising and developing. Um, oh I yeah, think, I think too, Charlie. It's a, it's about thinking. I had um, conversation today with with my with the plumber that I work for, and he had to. He's taken a piece of wood home over the weekend to play with to turn into a shelf, but then on Monday we have to find three hours in his day for him to run it over, drop it at the job, and then get back to where he's going. And I said, well, why don't you just get it couriered? Oh well, it's going to cost money. I said, yeah, but every job you don't work, every hour you don't work, so money you lose ten dollars. So, but it's not. It's not just that. It's also the, the fuel cost for him to do it too. Oh yeah, that's right. So I said three hundred and thirty dollars. <throat> I said I. I reckon we'd get lots of couriers doing it for that price. But it's air it's, task group. Oh, I, I no, I hadn't even thought of that one. But yeah, 
that someone would do it. That's yeah, that's such an issue. Look, I but know, it's, mm. but it's my business, and I need to do it. Well, actually, no, no. I've got, I've got, <laughs> no. I've, I've got your day sorted. Okay, you need to do this. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> no, it's Who's my gonna business, say no and to I Gail. want to do it. It's my business and I want to do it. And that's really good. So what you then do is schedule out a little bit of time when he's got some downtime or a little bit more quiet time so he can just drop around and do a, um, hey, just come in to check, check on it. How's it going? Have you got it in place? And do that that, that nice touchy feely follow up. It's not that he's yeah. not going to do it. It's just you're changing the timing of when he does it. Yeah. It's such, that's such a, like, it's such an interesting one when that comes up, though. And it comes up a lot. Like, it really does. And I've gotten to the stage, once I know my clients and once they know me, I'm like, you know, if you do that, I'm just going to bitch slap you. Like, don't even think about it. I will find you if you go and do that. And that's, but that's after a period of time and they know me because it's, and look, I did it myself. Honestly, I've done it myself. You know, like, I'm as OCD as can be in certain aspects of the business when it comes to the finance side. And one of the hardest lessons to learn was letting go oh my God, it was like I might as well have broken out in hives and started hyperventilating. It was ridiculous. I used to have to pound the pavements at 10 o'clock at night to psych myself up for the next day to hand the stuff off. And the reality is the work still got done. Everything got done when it was in time. Yeah, sure, it might not have gotten done with my pretty colours because I was OCD, but it still got done. And I know that it's really hard for businesses, but as Gal just said, you're going to lose three hours. And as you just said, Charlie, you're going to spend money on your car. Why the heck do that? Like, it just doesn't make so sense, think, right? I, I mean, I said fuel cost wasn't just fuel cost. You've got no, to wear it's repairs and, and maintenance, registration. It's and everything. It's the stuff that we think of because we, we, we understand we're sitting, that side of the yeah. business. <clears throat> And because yeah. we're sitting out, we're not, we don't necessarily have that intense emotional attachment. It's not our business that we started from scratch and inception from the very first day, you know. And because I'm sure that there's things in my business that people could just come in and just take right off me. And it, for me now, like I've just got, Gal has access to the last pass because I'm like, you know what, if it's got to be done, just go find it. Like, because if you wait for me, it won't happen, right? And I think there's an aspect of that where, our clients struggle with that, but then they struggle with, oh, I don't want to spend the money. Well, if you don't want to spend the money, then you also don't want to make money. Because if you don't want to go and spend 50 bucks, but you're happy to lose three hours of your time, then clearly you're not focused on making money. And that sounds really harsh, but that's the flip side of the coin, right? That is actually the flip side of the coin. And that's just a very neutral way of putting it. But it's, yeah. No, I, it's, don't, I don't know that they think like that. No, like no. I've, no, I've no, done. no, it's not. It's no. not. Honestly, if I if I can just interject, part of part of that is because um, this is something that I had to deal with a lot. There is a level of everything that you aren't doing yourself is something you are paying someone else, so therefore it's it, it, it's a sunk cost, right? It's money that yep. you're you're not keeping <clears> for yourself. <throat> now that's actually a really good baseline to take. It's a fantastic baseline to take. Is this something I can do myself? Is it going to give me the return on investment of me doing it myself? That's where it stops, though. <laughs> People have taken it to the oh, it doesn't cost. If, if I'm if I'm paying someone, I'm not making that money because my time isn't worth anything. And you've actually got to get back into that mindset of my time is worth something. Yeah. The difference what, what you is. just said though, you said return on investment. So that there mm. is, that's like a massive difference. That. No, that's right. That, that's exactly right. And the fact that um, I think when we think about our time is a return on investment, I think that comes from experience. I think that comes from knowing. And it thinks, honestly, I think it comes from having a good team around you, a team that will actually do what Gail does and suggest a different way of doing it because that's the return on investment right there. You know, you're, you're not paying for her to do a service. You're paying for her wisdom, the experience in business, the knowledge, the neutral viewpoint that allows you um, to make better and more strategic decisions for your business that are not emotionally driven. Um, and by the way, emotions don't just sit with women. 
you know, men can have some horrific moods <laughs> in the day. You know, like they it's can, just they can go. It's just different. It's just really, it's really just, different. It is different, but they experience the same stress. You know, they're under the stress to financially provide for their family, so they're always on the go, 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 go. You know, I've got to go get money. I've got to go do this. So they don't have the downtime that they need because in their head I've they're carrying so much. much. I have to pay my staff because some of these guys do actually have staff. Some of these tradies that we work with, men and women, but men, men predominantly, do have staff. They have other tradies that they've employed. That's they've right. Apprentice. They've got whatever else. They've got to deal with it. So they I don't think, have that downtime. <clears throat> I think the real interesting one that I came across this, this last quarter was um, I offered to do some work in zero for didn't ask to get paid for it, Um, was quite happy to play with it. And then because he didn't want to pay for it either, I might might admit, but he was quite happy to pay his bookkeeper probably at least twice my salary. And then when it came to his Baz, she she had two things she didn't know what to do with. And that was all. Two. So you saved him a lot of money in doing that. Saved him. And when I went back to him and he saw the bill from oh, – the other thing I did was told him he couldn't play in it. <laughs> I love fun. that. That's my favourite. <laughs> but you, and, he, and he likes playing in it. So my theory is I'll go in first thing in the morning when everything comes through and I'll get it all sorted so that when you do go and play in it when you get home from work, there's actually nothing to play with. So – it just does it's like if there's nothing to play with then you can't do anything and it's all done and and so that's you can't... That not being able to downtime that's what that is yeah I yeah, think, and, yeah and, and, and yeah. It's, i need to be i need to make sure that i'm on top of everything within my business yeah, yeah. that's what i think that is it's like okay i haven't done something let's go find something because i better do something because yes. that way i'm productive in the business um yep. yeah and that's a, and that's just always happens in early years too it does it is. But yep. it's just in- interesting that this the amount this baz cost to the the amount the previous. The baz before, and I think we're talking like about three thousand dollars. Yeah, that's a massive. And the yeah, smarter thing in that too is because you're in the business in. day in day out, you know exactly where those transactions are meant to go, how they're meant to be coded, what the impact of them is, more so than a person that is really sitting quite remotely to the business. You know, like because you know because you did the booking, you took the deposit, you processed the credit card, and then you reconciled it. It makes so much more sense. Like it really does. It's yeah. It's I just think overall, this is just me, I think overall in Australia, we really need to change our mindset around contracting, around bringing people into the business, around outsourcing um, professional services. I just think this is a historic thing that has travelled through business. People spend way too much time focusing on what their expenses are in the business But I can tell you right now, they don't spend nearly as much time focusing on their bottom line and what their net profit is and whether that net profit is sufficient to pay for their families because they're so focused on, I don't want to pay that money, that they're not necessarily driving profitability in their business. So, and there's been lots of studies done in our industry to show that it's smarter use of time and a a smarter use of your resources to use the services like what we've got. Like it just... Yeah, it really is. Like, it just, I think we just need to change the way that we think. I think. Well, the, I, I think yeah. also um, one of the things, and I wanted, I did wanted to bring it up because we're talking about, you know, the three of us are obviously very experienced and we've got a lot of, lot of years of experience behind each of us and combined. I don't even want to try and add up those numbers. Um, yeah, because we've all got experience in our own businesses as well. Um, I've run multiple businesses. It sounds like you've run multiple businesses, Katie. Um, Gail's, Gail's got a, a wonderful background in mm-hmm. um, helping people uh, in mm. um, financial, financial distress and financial difficulty. Um, so, yeah, that's a lot of experience that we've got mm. there as, as a group. But then you talk to someone about um, outsourcing. Yeah. Oh, but I've tried that, and the person I had was terrible. They didn't know what they were doing, or I had to micromanage them. And that's actually a, a, that's part of the issue with um, some of our industry. Some of the some of the things that happen within Australia. I'm going to say that a lot of those people wouldn't have been from within Australia, though. 
No. Um, yeah. And I, you know, I don't want to sort of bash anything out here, but um, we have a mindset, and yeah, you know, I've heard you two say it quite, quite candidly tonight. Yeah, I'll slap their wrist if they do this. <laughs> don't touch. Yeah. We'll tell them what they can and can't touch, and what they can and can't do. And you know, you've developed that rapport to be able to do that. That is something that we are uniquely positioned to do. Um, oh so yeah if, a, if a business owner has had a bad experience don't take that as the be all and end all of what our um, outsourcing contracting um, strategic sourcing is have a chat to other people who might it, it, some of it could have just been a personality thing and it's not that your personality everything's bad, personality the, the contractor's personality I love that man <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're not talking about my, my, my client. <laughs> Love it. I can see you're getting that beautiful sunset there. I'm like, oh. Oh, it's lovely. Hang on. It looks divine. Us around. There oh, we go. check oh. that out. Oh, look God. at that. That is, this is why we a work true Australian people. sunset. I know, isn't it? It's, it's divine. It's, it's divine. Beautiful. This is why we okay. work virtually so we get to see the wonders of the world. That is a big part of it too, by the way. But, um. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, absolutely. But, yeah, I, I just really wanted to bring, get sort of um, knock that one out a little is that not all personalities oh. are going to gel. Just because it hasn't worked one time doesn't mean to say it's not going to work another time for you. Um, it could be just your maturity in business has changed. It could just be your outlook has changed. Mm. It could be that you just didn't have the right person helping you out. There are clients that I have actually said, I'm sorry, I can't work for you. I am not yeah. the right person to do this work. It's yeah. not that this isn't the work I don't, this isn't the work I want, just not want a match. to do. I want to do that work. It's just not a match. The, the way it all works is not a match. And I'm honestly, I'm candid enough and bright, brutal enough to say no, but this isn't working. That whole, I don't know, like it, it's, you know, it's like when you're dealing in, 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 in anything in life, it's relationship based, it's personality based, right? I've had, if you want to talk about outsourcing versus employees, over the years I've had some employees and I'm like, hmm, you know, like they haven't been the right match for the business over a long period of time. I, by the way, I've been taken to the unions because my employee uh, drove through a red light, then ran the oil out in the engine and somehow that was my fault. <laughs> um, so, like, I'm, it, I'm impressed that you're Did you not give them appropriate Oh, training, yeah, like, please? honestly... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did like somehow, not, and so when I sacked him, did you not wife, go through the appropriate process? Well, people? yeah. You, I mean, coming from a mechanical background, I would have thought that he'd know, you know, that the car needed oil. But anyway, you know, and that was an employee. Um, so I don't personally think employee versus outsourcing or employee versus a person that's working remotely is anything different. So. It's a, it's a pretty thing. It's not. Yeah. It's a thin line to say to me. Well, you know, it didn't work for me. Well, there's a lot of reasons why it didn't work. Personality would be the big one. Skill set is another one. Cultural difference is another one. So, in the accounting and the bookkeeping industry, it is not uncommon nowadays to have work outsourced to India, the Philippines, Vietnam. Why? Because you're paying twelve dollars US an hour for people that have two degrees. Okay. Now, do I think that's a good or a bad idea? No. I, I'm relatively neutral on it the reason I'm relatively neutral on it is because there's a still regardless of artificial intelligence there's still a lot of work that is basic data entry yeah. so in my brain if I'm to assess the value that I'm going to give to my client in terms of helping them manage their business financially through the accuracy of numbers it's a smarter decision for me to send that work to someone that can do the data entry so long as they do it consistently the way that it's been set up and so that it delivers the the types of reports that I need but keeping in mind if I'm sending that work out to those cultures their cultures are adverse to saying no that's the way their cultures work right that's and that's okay too so you as the person that's sending the work the onus like what you were saying earlier Charlie the onus is then on you to set up the systems and the processes so that they don't have to say no so that they so that you're phrasing the information in such a way so that it's completely transactional and that's not hard to do 
because they are so dedicated to what they're doing, they will do that work. Their life depends on them doing that work because those countries don't have as much money flowing through them often. They're paid significantly less. Would I say, would I get someone um, from, say, one of those countries to come in and speak one-on-one -on -one to my clients? Probably not. Why? Culture, again, language differences, rapport, the time that you've been with those clients. So there's no one size fits all. It just doesn't exist. And you can have a high turnover employees or you can have a high turnover of outsourcing. It doesn't matter. It comes down to you, as you said, Charlie, where you're at in business, whether you're micromanaging. I'm pretty sure that I have, I've had some people in my time that have come in and they do not want me micromanaging. But I'm now at the point in business where I'm like, I ain't micromanaging you. So if you can't just get in and take over, you are not the right fit for this business. Correct. Yep. You know, so like I've come yep. full if circle, right? Your, if you can't show initiative and if I say, exactly. here's, here's the problem I've got, here's how I want to do it, and you look at it and come back to me and say, and you don't want to look at it and come back right. to me and say, actually, I think you're wrong. I think this is a better way of doing it. You're not the right person. Exactly. Because I've come full circle. I've taken, 10, I've taken 10 minutes to look at this and come up with what I think is the right way, but I'm handing it off to you. I'm prepared to pay you for, and I, you know, I normally say this, two hours go out, do your assessment, do your research and come back and give me, and if you go, oh, this is what I think it is and then it doesn't work, well, that's on you, not on me. <laughs> exactly. And I think, Gail, when you've sat with me before, I'm like, you can ask, I don't care if you break something. Like if a person's coming into my team, whether they be using their services externally or within the team, I do not care if you break something. But if you don't tell me you broke it and then I find out after the fact, yeah, I'm going to be pretty ticked off, right? So I'm the one that ultimately needs to set the boundaries around what the expectations are. So it could be that perhaps when a person outsourced, those boundaries weren't clear. Like I had that same experience recently when yeah. I went through, I was looking for someone to come in and I didn't onboard them well. Great, 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 great lesson for me. The onboarding process was confusing for them and it caused stress on their part. Um, and then, so that was a very fair feedback. So we all learn through that process. You know, it's like, I will ask me questions. I'm like, you can ask me as many as you like. And likewise, I'll ask her things. I don't know how to do this. It's the right fit for your business. And as the owner, I think then choosing to sack, for want of a better word, either clients or suppliers or team that don't fit the business because otherwise the business ain't going to function. It isn't. You know? Yeah, and you know, you talk about that. You said you've had employees. I know I've had employees. I'm sure Gail's had employees as well, where you've just gone, oh, this it's the worst feeling. Mm. It is, it's, it's a horrible. horrible feeling. And it's a really, really horrible feeling when you've got to call them in and say, look, I'm sorry, this isn't working. You it's no horrible. longer have a job. It's um, horrible. Um, look, I can give you a, a great example of a young lady that we had uh, working in our retail stores. She, she was fantastic when the management was there. Um, and then when the management left, she, we were getting these reports from the other guys who were working with her, the other people working with her. And we're like, that doesn't sound like her. So um, I did a secret shopper on her. She didn't know who I was. And I did a secret shopper on her. And I went in and um, I, I walked around the store and I watched what she was doing. And this young lady had sat on the phone for a 20 minutes while I was in the store on the phone to her friend telling her how bored she was because there was nothing there to do. Um, <laughs> now, I heard this as the customer. <laughs> Oops. And then when she hung mm. up, she went and got her makeup and did her makeup at the counter. Oh. We weren't a beauty store. We were, we were a retail DVD store. We weren't a beauty store. And so when I went up and introduced myself to her and I said, hi, I'm so is that she's, oh, hi. I said, yeah, would you mind getting your bag and leaving? <laughs> Whoa. She was so totally, she said, what did I do wrong? I said, well, where do you want me to start? <laughs> yeah, that's, it come. I don't know. Like, I remember I was, gosh, I was in my mid twenties, mid to late twenties, I was working somewhere. And I had an 18-year-old girl come into property management. And I don't know if this is a generational thing or what, but she said to me, at the end of the day, basically, we only had cleaners come into this particular office once a week. They're just like, go empty your own bins. She whipped her head around and she said to me, oh, I don't empty bins. I said, oh, you do now. Like, you know, it was, it was such an interesting 
Like it was just, I, I thought it was such an interesting comment. I was like, I'm pretty sure that my first job outside of school, and I know for a fact my first job outside of school, it was in retail, stationary retail, after I got back from my um, exchange program, I cleaned the toilets and I cleaned the kitchen, I emptied the bins and I did the archiving. It did not matter, you you know, like it, it was just a different thought process. And as you're talking then, I was thinking, you know, like you see these books, they say, instead of saying I have to work, I get to work. You know, that, that thing I'm of so I get lucky. Yeah, I I'm get so to lucky. work. It changes the mind. Like, it's just like, yeah, what an opportunity I get to work. So if you're rocking up for the paycheck and uh, you don't want to be involved in the business, this industry probably isn't for you <laughs> because it's just not going to work. You've you really got it. You do have to be self-driven. Um, You've got to be self-directed. You really have to have an issue. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you we, do, we, 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 have a, we have a saying that um, there's no such thing as bored. There is always something. Oh God, yeah. my, my dad's oh, sitting over here always. laughing because he's hearing some he's hearing my half of this so as a kid if we ever said we were bored he would say right there's rocks in the backyard go and move them and he would have us we literally <laughs> move rocks from one side of the backyard you're never going to say you're bored are you <laughs> we never said we were bored again <laughs> oh that's gold Charlie we had a 250 acre paddock with rocks in it that we could pick if we were bored <laughs> oh see what I mean See, same thing. I There's know. Rocks was... in the backyard. Oh, let's go That's pick rocks. No, I don't like picking. Oh, God, I hate picking oh, rocks. I'm pretty certain I had someone come. We had one of the, one of the youngsters come out here one day. He had the golf club and they said we were bored and there were three of us older people, me and my dad and a couple of his mates. And we all looked at them and we went, nah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that solved that. You're not going to say that again, are you? <laughs> yes. no. He said, oh, I'm bored. And Dad said, fawns need mowing, uh, sprinklers need fixing. <laughs> <laughs> like, zip it. Zip. <laughs> no such thing as bored. bored in my world. No. That's no, the fun even, bit, though. Even, even now, right, if you get bored, it's like, okay, so you don't want to sit and watch TV. That's okay. That you've had your downtime. You want to do something. Um, for me, that might just be sleep. <laughs> Look at the colour of the sky behind you, Charlie. It's divine. Absolutely divine. Oh, it's purple. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, huh? I know. It's a nice way to end the week and it's a nice way to end the day. Actually, I started my day similar to that. Jonathan was, uh, I don't know, he's just wanting cuddles this morning. So I sat outside on the hammock and he's about to come in. You need to go out, pretty please. Thank you. <laughs> he's, How old is he? he's four. He's actually really good. Oh, but he, we sat out on the um, hammock this morning because it was bucketing rain. And so we've got like a hammock swing and we sat outside and it was a nice way to start the day. And I kind of think, God, I'm lucky. You know, like I have sat in a lot of commutes to that office and you have walked into the office and you could cut that atmosphere with a freaking knife because everyone is shitty. They're tired. They're grumpy. You've got people that have commuted for an hour and a half. You've got dads that didn't get to have breakfast with their kids. Um, so, you know, I think, God, how lucky am I? And then I went into a meeting with one of my favorite clients um, and that was around planning his business, doing business planning. And that was so much fun and we had laughs. And yes, there's a lot of work to do behind that but it doesn't matter that there's a lot of work because the fun bit is I get to do it it's 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 an absolute it privilege right? it is it's an Isn't absolute right? privilege I'm, we're, we're, and I often I often think to myself I'm so lucky to be able to be doing yeah this. Yep. I know I'm I know so, I'm so honored you have asked me to me. this clip mm. for you yeah, I know it, it. It is, and then you take that one step further. We're getting to speak to their clients, right? So, I put a hairdressing mm. salon, a barber shop, and the conversations are the best. You know, like it's those clients, and I think I had like in the beginning, the clients didn't know that we were like an outsource service or a phone virtual reception, and there were at first, like there were a couple of times, and like they were like, "Oh, are you the you know, are you the person that's just the virtual reception?" I'm like, "No." I am the person that runs this place. If you want to look good and you want to straight your stuff down that main street, then you need to come through me. <laughs> so we get to have that fun with the clients. And all they'll say, all they'll phone in, they'll be like, oh, you know, I really need to fit him. I'm like, okay, how much hair have you got? Because it's a barber shop. How much hair? Oh, not much. I said, mm, okay, I could probably do you in 15 minutes. So let's squish you in, right? You know, so we get to have fun with them. We and do. then you're like, and that's the fun bit. Like you get to have fun with them and that's that to me is a highlight 
Mm. Yeah. Right. And and for me, for me, it's when um I see a product launch or I see a service launch or I see um them doing something like I did that. No one knows I did that, but I did that. That's mm. mine. It's a proud moment, <laughs> isn't it? Do you do product oh, launches? Good. Um, yeah, I've done I've done oh goodness, I do all sorts of things, honey. <laughs> I am. Um, I, 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 I need help with something. I came up through the internet marketing ranks. Um, wow. Just, just to put that in perspective, that was where I actually started. Was that was where I got my break? Was with a lot of the internet marketers. So helping them run their wow. product, home, just putting their systems together, doing their lead capture, um, doing their nurture programs, uh, getting wow. it out. Yeah, yeah. And that's where. <laughs> That right there, I think, is a classic example of how the services that we either market or put forward can often underdefine or, yeah, underdefine really what or underestimate really what we do. Because if you were to look at top up, yeah, well, I'm still into my second bottle of water. <laughs> <laughs> like Gail is like, you know, she might be a VA, but she's certified mailchimp. Her daughter does she's the, the newsletter. Yeah. Let's not also forget, you know, she's she yeah. keep up. She's doing exactly. Her best, um, she's it's doing brilliant, her best, right? Best this stuff. Goes, I don't have uh, qualification. That's a word. Certification. That's um, something yeah, that you need. She's more than just so much of a VA. Yeah, and then you get someone like me who I'm an online business manager. But what is it you do? Well, what do you want? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and what you, you don't, don't know, you're what fine. You're to do. Um, yep. And if I can't do it, I'm going to tell you that, no, that's not the sort of thing I can do, but hang on a minute. Why don't you go and have a chat with this person or why yep. don't I get this person involved in our team and we'll just put all that together for you and, and deliver that as a package. That too is a really good point. Like what, And I think I wrote something to a client today and I said, you know, for that price that you pay, ultimately you, not only do you get access to us or the services, but you get access to our network and networks cannot be undervalued. They can't, right? Because in our industry specifically, so much of what we are, um, so much of the referrals that we'll do will be with people that we already know, people that we know what their expertise is, how they work. So we sort of have that intimate knowledge of where they're going and it allows us, I think, to better client match. So match a person to the correct services. So it's it's good. It's a, it's, a, it's a really good thing, I think, that's come about. And I hope the market continues to grow here. I really do. I, I, I think gross. it will, and, um, mm. you know, for as much as COVID was a terrible time for everyone and, you know, we, we went through that. Oh, I don't even know how to explain that last two and a half years. Yeah. <laughs> been um, what I really am absolutely astounded at is how the virtual um, services and the virtual environments have just blown up, just taken off. Um, being in the US, I saw it a lot more than like I saw what's going on here. Um, we're wow. still a little bit behind, but in the US, honestly, I, in Honolulu, when they shut down um, indoor dining, you think I would start, that would um, spell the death knell for so many other businesses. But they pivoted. They pivoted. Yeah, they pivoted very they fast. Would, I, I, I really hate using that term, but they, but they it's literally true. turned... They turned on the pin of the head, head of a pin. Sorry, maybe I've had one too many champions. <laughs> no. Um, but they, they did, they pivoted. And the next thing I know is that we could go through most of the uh, online ordering services and we could get plated dinners, admittedly not on top China plates, but they were in lovely containers, they were plated dinners and they were delivered to your door. Yeah. That's and yeah. they and I read an article about that. If, I think, gosh, maybe only one or two months into it, saying how a lot of the American businesses have pivoted so quickly um, mm -hmm. and changed that. And then you know, Melbourne followed suit relatively, you know, as well. Like that's and I think at the moment there's a, a documentary too on Netflix, something to that, like saying that the opportunities are there, but you've just got to have a broader view or uh, you know like don't think outside the box you've got to think like there is no box i think that's the big difference like mm. there is I no boxes great, yeah yeah i think that's a great i think that's a great statement but yeah, yeah. I, look because i was there during that and i saw it and i'm like australian australian businesses actually couldn't have done what they did because we didn't have the infrastructure in place 
Um, no. A lot of those restaurants had been resistant to doing that um, and then they had no other choice. That was what they had to do to survive. And it was, it, it's just been fantastic because I know every now and again we're like, oh, we just don't want our standard pizza tour. We just don't want our standard um, things done more. Uh, what do we normally get? Sign in, <laughs> you know, like on the Um, Oh, we really want some steak. So, you know, Outbacks Australia in, in um, Honolulu, you could get an entire Outback Australia meal delivered to you. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? Like it's, hmm. It what really do you, is. you would think, though, with the populations in the eastern states, they could have perhaps gone to that. But I think, you know, there's a whole heap of reasons. But, well, but, well I, I, as I said, we didn't have, we don't have the infrastructure here. Mm. Um, and we've got a very different legislative system um, or legislative mm. framework around a lot of that as well. So the US didn't have to go through all of that, whereas um, in Australia it's, it is slightly different. I think it would change eventually, but I think we're going to be slightly yeah. different. Yeah, but I think in most systems we probably sit behind some of those markets. Like it's, we just don't. Australia, why we don't necessarily have the population, and we're really sort oh, of around the coast of towns as well. You know, we don't we don't have that density of population. Um, Correct, and that's a yeah. big thing. And that's yeah, when we that's when, a really we interesting. The, yeah, we were looking at the comparisons, and they're like, yeah. well, "Why don't you do it?" I'm like, "Well, we're 25 million people in the whole width of America. That well, we fit in the width of America, and we spill over a little, you know. So, 25 million people." which is smaller than your smallest town, city? I don't know. Like it's not okay. a lot of it's Actually, Perth, Perth isn't. If Perth was in the United States, it would be the fifth largest city. In the United States? Yeah. In the, yes. But yeah, we don't so have the I density, think... though. We just spread out a lot more. Correct. But we still, we still have the pop. Like if you're talking about it, we mm. have the same population as Chicago. Yeah. And there was a couple of others. I was Which really, really Sydney, surprised Sydney, to hear Brisbane it. Sydney, Brisbane, and Melbourne would be up there, right up but there. But you've got to consider that that that's across the entire east coast of Australia, whereas yeah. the US, it's like you, you can't move in some of those cities. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, yeah, they've no. got that density there. They've got that very intense. Yes density compared to here yeah. and that changes to the dynamics of how you um the services that you offer and who you can contact and the way that you market and the way that you interact like it changes it so 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 much, much more so much so more. That, yeah, sure. if we just come back to what we were talking about in terms of um virtual outsourcing and virtual well, strategic sourcing we've got those networks we've built them up over many many years you know, so I might contact someone that actually lives in the US or lives in the UK or uh, because they're the most appropriate person to do that job and I trust them to do it. I trust them enough to recommend them and put my name on the line. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting point too. Like if you refer it, it's kind of like all the um, networking groups where you've got BNI or whomever. If there's a referral in place, you're trusting that that person will action it in the most appropriate way. That's really true, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Very, very true. And that's actually probably more powerful then because you know that the level of service that the person's going to get is a whole lot better mm-hmm. because there's Correct. been, yeah, that personal connection made and that very specific referral done as well. So, yeah, that's a really good point. I like that. I think overall, like the industry's got so many benefits, like it really does. Um, and I, I, I think also just, you know, for other business owners who are looking at this, I also know that that person is going to do the right thing by me and not come in and try and steal the client, slice off slice off little bits of what I'm doing for the client. They'll come back to me and say, hey, listen, I, I've been asked to do this. Oh, yeah, no, that's fine. Oh, you've been asked to do that. Let me just, let me get onto them and just make sure they understand what the implication of that is. I don't want to sort of say I've got an ego in that, but, you know, I've got a contract. <laughs> I, I provide certain services and, um, yeah, I want to make sure that my business is actually looked after in all of this. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a – yeah, it's – I just – I think um, overall I think there's so much expansion and there's so much opportunity and there's so much – like two-thirds of the Australian economy is small business. 
right? So that's two thirds that has the potential to continue to impact small business and the communities of those small businesses. So given Australia's vastness and given, you know, <laughs> the, given that where we're situated, does it not make sense to continue to provide services to small businesses that are intimate, that are professional, that are well-priced, that are potentially local if possible or if at all possible? Because what you're doing then is not only building stronger businesses, but you're building communities. Um, and Australians naturally are very good at that. So in supporting these services, instead of seeing it as an expense, see it as the business that you would give to any other one. We are no different from going and getting your plumbing done by a bloody plumber. <laughs> it's no well, different. Let's, let's not forget too that you're actually developing our economy as a result. Yes, and that's a exactly. Really, really that's and that's a that's a massive one. I think during COVID, you know, it, women had the highest uptake of new businesses. Why? Because all of a sudden they're at home with the kids. Um, some potentially some of the income that they received through parenting services wasn't available. So they they in themselves became fairly entrepreneurial, you know, but still a massive percentage of, of the small businesses in Australia are run by women because mm with children, with family expectations and lifestyle, there is a need for flexibility. But if you Absolutely. give us your money, if you give us your money, 82% of that's going to go straight back into our families and our communities because that's where we spend our money. Hmm. We will put our money back into the family, back into the local community because we see that as the best way to provide for our family. So I think we can't afford the services of the plumber and the electrician. And that's the exactly and right. You know, and yeah. there was a boom during COVID in places like um, Bunnings. There was a boom. They didn't suffer because it wasn't just home reno. There were a lot of trades people that were getting caught. All of a sudden, people at home, they, you know, they're going to fix their house. Um, they've got the resources. They've got the time. So they had people come in and fix the house if they could. There was a boom yep. in Bunnings, you know. So, but that money goes straight back out. It goes straight back out into the local economy. So yep. it doesn't matter that we're at a desk outside of your office. It's still a local business that can provide a service and that will help grow the communities. I just think personally that the advantage is that it's female run uh, because it's guaranteed, pretty much guaranteed, that we're going to put the money back into the community. It's pretty much guaranteed. Um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting phenomenon. You know, small business in Australia – so much of our um, GPD is mining, but I think having two thirds of the Australian economy being small business, that's a pretty big slice of the Australian economy that's run by the the, the smaller business that's person, isn't it? That it's, I it's massive. Not that that's massive. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's ma Look, 95% goes out in mining in terms of the GPD, but two thirds of our economy is run by small businesses, medium to small enterprises. Um, that does include farming, um, but that's a lot. Oh, that's still. That's, that's still, a lot. Yeah, that's massive. You know, so if we get into that space and we understand that you're a business supporting community or families, as opposed to, oh gosh, I don't want to spend that money. I'm going to do it by myself. It kind of changes your mindset, right? It, it kind of understands. Just like you as the person want to have people use your trade services. Well, we as the support person would hope that people use our services as well. It's reciprocal in nature. Mm. You know, like it's got so much potential. It really does. And honestly, mm. if it gives you an extra hour in the day that you can, I don't know, go and walk on the beach and let your, you, let your toes sink into the sand or, um, I don't know, maybe fix that fix that thing in your house that you've been waiting to be fixed. Or, for or maybe knock off and get home for dinner. You know, huge you one. Your family huge and your one. Kids. Yeah, absolutely. You, try. Yeah, you know, because I come from a tradie family. I, I come from a tradie family. And I know that was something that, yeah, my dad always tried to do was make sure that he'd be home so that we could have dinner together. Didn't always yeah. work, but he tried. Um, I've seen my, my ex was a tradie and, oh, my God, he worked so many long hours. Hmm. Um, and I'm like, do. how can I help you? How can I help you do this better? Because this is stupid. This is not mm. what we signed on for. And then my son, <laughs> the three generations of tradies in my, in my, in my immediate um, vicinity. And um, 
yeah, you know, he's like, I, I just don't know what to do anymore. Yeah, you know, I'm using, uh, he's used to zero, which I thought was a great decision on his part. Like, can I, can I offer you a section service? Can I do something to help you out? Can yes. I, can I do your book work? Can I, can, I was like, no, I want to do it all myself. <laughs> but there's the other side of that too, right? Like, so you're talking about relieving your service, like Gail covers the phones for me in the morning. That two hours really allows me to lie in bed and cuddle Jonathan. You know, like uh, that okay. two hours, that's cuddles that, that I get. That is and that's precious. Priceless. That's priceless. Oh, it's so yeah. precious. Yeah, it's pri- yeah, like that's my favourite time of the morning. I would have killed for that as a young mum. Yeah, me yeah. too. Yeah, I was, yeah. My, time. I, mean, I was working in corporate at that point, but I would have oh. killed for that as a young mum. Mm. As a young mum, being able to spend some time with my kids and just, Oh, I don't know. Take them to school and do the school drop off, and not have to yeah. drop them um, either at daycare or, as as the case may be, my mum ended up taking, you know, retiring, and doing that, doing all that for me because she looked at what I was doing and went, "Oh, you can't do this forever. Oh, it's stupid." Um, and I was very, very grateful she did it. But oh my god, I would love to have been able to do that again. <laughs> it's it makes a massive difference to me like in the morning like it's the most precious time but I think too it makes a massive difference to Jonathan because he sees me out here often a lot on the computer but that time that I get to spend with him like that's our time mm-hmm. you know it's yeah. it is is our time and that's and the other thing that when you're talking that strong like really um resonated with me is that I've known I know that when a lot of people let's talk trades like a lot of them when they get into business they have their wife do do the work or a person in the family do the work Um, And I think initially for cost saving, but initially they're sort of working through the process themselves of figuring out how the business is going to work. The one really important thing to remember is that that can actually impact the marriage because there's no separation of work and home. Yeah, it really does. There's no separation of work and home. So you've got a few things that are going on, one of which is the wife or whomever that's doing the book work may not be as experienced. You know, they've been come from a different industry, their home, they might be doing happy the kids and then all of a sudden they've picked up this extra slack being the the back office administration, the business. The assumption then is that they've got the time to do it, even though they may have kids at home. So that's not a great assumption to start with, you know, because, you know, kids are busy. Um, But without that separation of work and home, the ability to have... um, very important conversations around the direction of the business and the financials in the business and any strategic opportunities in the business becomes a little bit mixed and becomes a little bit emotional. There's no neutrality, you know. Well, it also um, becomes quite stressful on the relationship. Very, because the entire very. Because becomes focused on the business. Whole it business. Really does. I it's think the whole and I'm, I'm speaking from experience. Same my, here. My, my ex and I ran our businesses together and I we closed the stores and I'd come home and I'd be doing the book work and I'd be saying... Same. Exactly the same. What the hell have you done here? Why? Is Why? This going on? And I'd be so tired and I'd be so, you know, just wrung out. I'd be so... And then I'd get angry because I told you not to do this and I said this shouldn't be done. And it's like, well, hang on. Whoa, you don't get to I'm doing all this bloody work. <laughs> it can very much become that. Like it really can. And I remember my accountant in the early days saying to me, do you want a marriage or do you want a business? And I think it was probably the best. Well, I didn't understand it at the time. Like I didn't, I was 21. I didn't understand it. But I think um, in hindsight, yeah, I understand it. Look, there are some people that work amazingly together as a couple. Like I have one client, a couple new newbies in business, 100% newbies. They just worked really well together in business. They also had though a very strong relationship and they, because they had a shop front, they also had a fairly good separation of roles. And I was doing sort of all the book work in the back end. So there wasn't that necessary need to take her home. Um, so that was very, I think that was a clever move on their part because in their case, their business became very stressful and they had to walk away from it. Um, But uh, yeah, that in itself, even though they weren't doing the administration or the back end, there was enough in a 10 hour day in their shop to keep them occupied, then to deal with the bigger scheme of the business going awry, 
that that in itself, without all the extra baggage in, in business, affected their relationship. But luckily, they went into it in a very strong place anyway. So there are some businesses that you see that are going up for advertisement in the East and their family-run businesses, you know, several generations. And you talk to them and they say they'll have raving big blues and fights in the boardroom. The bonus they have is they've got a board of directors or they've got a finance team or lawyers that will come in and help pave the way. So once again, it comes back to that neutrality. But if you've got two well, people in the marriage, manager, pardon? They have a business manager, don't they? Yeah, exactly. Oh, you have that would to be have... Us. Yeah, that will. Yeah, definitely. Like it's it, yeah. it makes sense. You have to have someone um, break through the difficulties they've got to clear the way for you to actually create the the decisions required or to master the decisions required or action them. But if you've got husband and wife or couples or families that are all involved in the business with no external party guiding you, then you, I believe that you're just creating a very big. Uh, space of a lot of tension and stress that can be very much negated um it does not have to be that way you have to have breathing space that's everyone needs breathing space that's what yeah. we can do for you yeah. oh my god yeah 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 like yeah, it's absolutely yeah. so look i'm just looking at our time we're really kind of running <laughs> right I'm sorry on. i talk right, a lot right. i get very excited no it's been fantastic katie look i'd actually like to get you back on um, oh, oh. There's, a, there's a few things that I think we, we could actually go through. You, you spoke mm. about, you know, couples and running right to the wind and all of that. Um, there's things that we, we, could, we could absolutely explore there and how we can help. But, and mm. the challenges we've seen, um, you've, got a, you've got obviously a wealth of experience. Dale's got experience. I've got experience. Um, and, hey, it's Tiffy time. <laughs> we Even won't forget that it's time. I'm just looking at my guy, my bottle of champagne here, thinking, mm, "We've spoken a bit, haven't we?" <laughs> Not quite. I think, I, th I think I sit back and I become very humbled about the people that I have around me, yeah, and how, how really how how good's not the right word. How how much we can give. So it's really lovely, mm. and it's really lovely to be part of this team. It is. It is. It is. Well, lovely. you know, Gail, um, you've made my you've made my life just so much easier. Um, just having you there and knowing that I can say, "Hey, can you look at this and let me know what I need to do with it?" <laughs> Even if it's, a, I have no fucking idea. <laughs> <laughs> I may, I may have done that once or twice. It's like, uh, oh, like no. I don't the best know. Best decision ever in business. This, Oh, honey, honestly, it's just like, for me, it's like, okay, so I'm not being dumb. I'm not being stupid here. This is like one of no, these never, things. Never. There is no such thing as stupid. The only stupid question is to not ask, ask the question in the first place. Yeah. Like, yeah, ask that. Ask that. So, Katie, you know. I, I would love to have you back on. Um, oh, now, can you. you just, just I, I think I'm actually just, just as we're going through this, I think we're going to break this up into a couple of um, segments. Just so we can put yeah, there's lots in there. There's a lot of good information in there. Um, Get boss I might babes and beauty and publish... brains together. <laughs> I might just publish the whole thing as a thing so people can listen, but um, I think I'm going to break it up as well because I think we've got some really good content in here. Um, if you're both okay with that, I think. Well, and, I think we um, were quite well behaved. Oh yeah, I'm always <laughs> we well were. behaved. Hey, there. I only dropped the f bomb once. <laughs> Okay, what are you saying? Um, we are always well behaved. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Be that be that on your own, Katie, because Charlie and I, I are. No, no, no. I was speaking to my client last night and I asked him a question. He, he said, I don't know. I said, Well, you're useless, aren't you? And then I realised what I said and I was like, Oh, I was meant to say sarcastically, Well, that's really useful. But instead it came out as, You're useless. And thank God, I was like, Oh, thank that's God so I've trained you all these though. months. Is it, well, that's yeah, so that Australian, is, though. Is that a bit it like me, t me telling the pl my um, plumber oh, the other you... day? Well, I was on the phone to him, and then a call came through on the computer for me to answer, and I told him to shush while I answered his call. <laughs> I'll be with you in a moment. Just wait. Honestly, yes. who it's... needs a wife when they well, have us? That's I know. Exactly. Who needs a wife what when they have us? Say? So embarrassed that <laughs> I told him to shush. I, I don't know hilarious. about that. I don't know if I want to be labelled with that. 
Um, but Katie, if you could tell us a little bit about how people could find you, please, that would be wonderful. Oh, radio. Um, I would say go to my website, but apparently it's down. So, no, you can't go to my website. Well, you need to talk I to know, me. I know. <laughs> I know. It's going to you because it's clearly had another crazy domains. And, yes, this is a bad advertisement for crazy domains. If you are using crazy domains, I suggest that you go straight to Charlie Leeson. Really ask oh, damn, Charlie I anything because <laughs> crazy domains. Mm-mm, mm-mm. So, yes, apparently it's down. So, um, I don't even know what. Oh, do I know what my, hang on, let me see if I can figure out the one three. I think it's one three hundred nine zero eight one. To eight. It's Virtual Office Connect. If you can't find me, find Charlie, find Gail. They'll find me. Gail will certainly find Virtual me. She lives down the road. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Yeah. So um, this is Katie from Katie Hurst and this is Tippy Time with Charlie and Gail. I hope you've all enjoyed our, our evening tonight. Thank you. And that brings us to the end of Tiffy Time for the week. We hope you've enjoyed the episode and we hope you join us next week. See you later, guys. <laughs>